Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an HP Pavilion laptop. This is HP Pavilion X360M and the exact model because there's a few specific variants. This one is an 14M-DH1001DX. If you want to know your maximum RAM capacity based on the CPU generation, CPU that you have, you have in here, I made that really short video, I'll leave in a link in the description so you can check the maximum RAM capacity for yours. We have upgraded this one to a 32 gig with no problem. You can do you, for, uh, for your laptop too if you have this exactly same one, but double check your maximum RAM capacity. In this video, we're gonna go over how you can access those RAMs and how you can remove or add. Just remember by adding RAM or removing RAM, you're not gonna change anything in the system. There's no configuration is required. Everything is set automatically by the BIOS. So pretty much don't worry about your files, anything like that. All you need to do is to shut down the computer completely. While you're shutting it down, before you click shut down, hold down the left shift um, button and then press shut down and don't let go until the light turns up, the turn on and off switch turns off, all right? Once you power it off completely, you wanna flip it upside down. I'll go over the tool that I'll be using is an iFixit screwdriver set as they have one of the best screwdrivers out there. I purchased myself this one. So we're gonna use a Phillips number number one and Phillips, I think it's, yeah. Phillips number one and Phillips number zero from this tool set. Also, if you get the pro set, they will include you with an opening tool and stuff like that. If not, grab yourself a topic and metallic topics are suitable for opening cases and covers. I'll leave the link for compatible RAM, the tool that I use in the video description in case you want to purchase yours. So we're going to grab a uh, Phillips number zero. You're going to remove two screws in front of the laptop. These are tiny screws. Go ahead and remove these ones. And now these are two hidden screws that we're gonna use a Phillips number one. These are, you need to grab the opening tool, put it right on the bottom rubber in the corner and lift it up a little bit. And then you can expose that screw right there. You're gonna remove this one. This one is a thick screw. And the one in this side. So those are the bottom screws. Now you're gonna use your guitar pick, your opening tool. And you want to start from the front end always because you know that the motherboard, the heat pipe, everything is in the back here, a battery, and there's nothing in the front. So we can safely put the opening tool right between the bottom cover and the palm rest right there. And then you, uh, what you want to do, you just want to peel it off like this. You, you want to hear some click sound, that's normal, that's what you want to hear. Just twist, twist. Go to the back, I'm thinking about two or three millimeter. Once I did the front and towards one side, then I'll lift it up, I'll just wiggle it around like this, and you're gonna hear those click sounds from the rest of the place. And there we have it. So I'm gonna flip it this way so I can see it better. So we, right away you don't see the RAM, the RAM are supposed to be like this, so it's not visible because they're right under this cover. To get to the RAM, you do not need to disconnect the battery, but if you're flimsy and you think you're gonna drop and move the metal and you're gonna make a, create a short on the motherboard, then sure, go ahead and disconnect the battery. To disconnect the battery, you wanna remove five screws. Two screws on the bottom of the battery, in front of the laptop, and three screws on the top row. One, two, three. Remove these three screws. Again, to upgrade the battery, you don't need to do, to upgrade the RAM, you don't need to remove the battery, but if you're really cautious. But to be in a safe side, you could remove it by just removing the screws and lifting it, bring it up, and you can disconnect it. Just remember, just because we disconnected the battery, and once we put it back in, we power it on, it might take up to 30 seconds for the screen to show anything, for the motherboard to do a main check, stuff like that and it's gonna give you a text saying that CMOS reset to default. Don't worry about it, that's normal because there is no BIOS battery. The BIOS takes the battery charge from the main internal battery. So it just, it will do another restart and then it will just go to the windows normally. All right, so once we remove that one, we're gonna remove this gaffer's tape here. Just rip it off, put it backward. You can rip it from this side or that side, doesn't matter. Now we wanna remove this cover. This cover, you can grab it from the sides, bring it up straight and walk around and bring it like that. 
there's a tiny clips around that holds the this metal cover like this just pinches them so put this one to side and there we have the ram there's one, two ram dim available one occupied one free all right to remove the ram all you want to do you want to put your fingers on the side on these triggers and you want to pull these triggers away from each other and the ram it will just should come pop out like this in 45 degree angle just like that to remove it grab it in a 45 degree angle and just pull it out in the same direction this is an 8 gig you can put an 8 gig and an 8 gig that will be a dual channel as long as you have both of them occupied it will be much faster than having one big ram here it will be dual channel so you can have an 8 gig and 16 gig that's fine too 4 gig 8 gig that's fine too but as long as you occupy both of them you'll be fine to put the ram in make sure the notch on the ram matches the notch right on the dim right there you want to bring it down in 45 degree angle right inside the connector all the way in pinch it even like that and then you want to push it towards the motherboard and you want to hear these two triggers open and close if you don't put the ram all the way inside the jack you let's say we put it halfway through and then we want to push it towards the motherboard it goes in with lots of force and the triggers stay open and that's a no no it's not going to show anything on the screen all right so make sure you always bring it down in 45 degree all the way in and then towards the motherboard and these triggers should stay straight grab the next ram is a four gig for demonstration make sure the notch matches bring it down push it down now you can see this one has a ram dims and uh, ram chips on the board on the both side some rams don't have do, uh, both side and uh, both side of them is not occupied with the rams so don't worry about it as long as the notch matches it doesn't matter the orientation of the chips on the ram all right so this is for demonstration i'm not putting it you can put a 16 gig and 16 gig to get a 32 that's the maximum we recommend for this type of cpu once you have upgraded grab your cover make sure you always focus on one corner align one corner right on the gaps and then push it down and then bring it down and push the rest and it should go in place and shouldn't be moving and then just put the tape right over gaffer's tape grab the battery that you removed make sure there's a tiny pinhole right here put this pinhole right in it and there's one on the other side and then drop the connector if you don't drop the connector if these are not aligned otherwise it will go to a different spot and you will short the motherboard all right so now what we're gonna do we're gonna put the five screws for the battery that we removed also another very important one is if you add an additional ram and you put the battery in your power on after 15 or 30 seconds you still don't get anything anything on the screen power off and switch the ram space ram place it put a new one that and the old one on the right side and then try again sometimes the bios doesn't detect and doesn't do a main check at first then you want to force it by replacing the ram space places all right once you're done down here with everything you want to grab the bottom cover align on top push the corners make sure you hear those nice big click sounds in the middle there's a clip you want to clip that one on the back if you see any gap opening just pinch them together and it will go to its place to finish it off just put the screw on the bottom and that should be on i'm gonna power on so you guys can see that it does power on and it does turn on otherwise my client will be really unhappy let's flip it over i'm gonna power it on and it should give me a text saying that CMOS battery reset, I mean CMOS reset to default somewhere over here. So I'm waiting a few seconds. And let's see. Nothing yet. And there we go. CMOS checksum CNA will, will be reset to default configuration. Press enter to reboot. And I'm gonna press escape so I can go to the BIOS. I don't wanna go to the Windows. So it's gonna reset and it's gonna work normally or you can go to the BIOS if you want F10 and there we have it XP X360 model 14MDH1000 8 gig RAM iCore 3 10th gen and I hope you guys liked this video and helped you guys out if you have any questions or requests feel free to leave them in a the video comment I'll try to answer them as soon as I can as always thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video